Hello friends, this is Jerry Thomas from Sakshi Apologetics Network. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting and an important subject. That is, why are some cultures advanced in science and why are other cultures backward in science? Or to put it explicitly, why is the Christian culture contributing much to the science and why are the Islamic and the Hindu cultures backward in science? Let me begin by giving you an indicator. Arukaba is a scientist based in Israel. He has published over 200 scientific papers. In other words, he is an accomplished scientist. One of his book on science was 100 years of Nobel Prize winners. What he has done is, he has gone to each and every Nobel Prize winners, looked at their background, looked at how they will identify themselves. Not this point, this is a very important point. He is not speaking, just speaking about, oh, they are from West, therefore they must be Christians. No. He is looking whether they identify themselves as an atheist or a Christian or any other identification that they have. So he looked at all the 100 years from 1901 to 2000, 100 years of Nobel Prize winners and this is the outcome that of his research. Uh, in his book 100 years of Nobel Prize winners, chapter religion of Nobel Prize winners, page number 59 to 60, he says, out of all the total Nobel laureates, 65.4 percentage identify themselves as Christians. Remember, Christians are only 31 percentage of the entire population. Compare this with the Hindus. Hindus are 15 percentage of the world population. But only 0.7 percentage, not even 1 percentage of Nobel Prize laureates, winners are Hindus. Same is the case with the Muslims. Muslims are 24 percent of the world population and even they are 0 0.8 percentage. Same is the case with Buddhists. They are 10 percent of the world's population and they are slightly better, slightly better than the Hindus and the Muslims. They have 1.1 percentage. But Christianity is so distinguished. It is 31 percentage and it has more than 65 percentage of Nobel laureates. If anybody can claim in terms of relate, relative accomplishment better than Christians, it is again the people of the Bible that is the Jews who are not even 1 percentage, who are not even 0 0.5 percentage of the world population but they have contributed or they are 21 percentage of the Nobel laureates. Now this raises a very significant question. Why are the Hindus not able to contribute to the science? Why are they not inventing? For example, again you look deep, delve into the data. In chemistry, there is hardly any Hindu Nobel laureates. There is not much accomplishment that they can show. Similarly, physics, 1.4 percentage. Although they pretend that they are very good in science, they are good in memorizing and passing some degree colleges like IIT and post-graduation colleges like IIM and all, that is fine. But we are speaking about authentic groundbreaking research. They are not there at chemistry at all, hardly there, hardly any little bit uh, uh, higher than 0 percentage, that is 1.4 percentage in physics and 0 0.6 percentage in medicine the core science, their contribution is next to nothing. Same is the case with Islam. 0.8 percentage in chemistry, 0.7 percentage in physics and almost nothing in medicine. Compare this with Christians. While their overall contribution or overall percentage of the Nobel laureates is 65.4 percentage, they have remarkably well in chemistry, 72.5 percentage, physics 65.3 percentage, medicine 62.62 62 percentage. 
so you see the vast difference in the contribution of the Christians versus the other two religions again as I said at the beginning this is how they these scientists identify themselves it is not just that they were from the Western society for example many of them would identify themselves as atheists or agnostics that would be uh, the world's population of atheists would be around 16 percentage and their contribution to chemistry is 7.1 percentage in fact they are better than Islam or uh, Hinduism so that is why they can pretend that they are better than the other religious people no they are not better than Christians remember mark that point their contribution to physics is 4.7 percentage and medicine is 8.9 percentage so Jews and Christians have distinguished themselves from any other group that you can think of why is it so it calls for an explanation all the more when we consider that the modern science itself originated in a Christian culture why was it that the Christian culture could create something like modern science and why is it that they are still excelling and the others are in a backward position now when we say this of definitely our uh, Hindu to our friends would object and they have cock and bull stories all around for example G. Madhavan Nair, ex ISRO chief, noted, says Aryabhatta knew about gravity before Isaac Newton. So, this claim that you would have heard either it in uh, uh, Bhaskarajarya or Aryabhatta, you would have heard this claim uh, at several places. Or, incidentally, he has started making these claims after he had been charged with a certain scams and after a few years of making vedic science claims after his retirement and after the cases were being filed against him naturally he joined bjp as well a few years before in this claim that aryabhatta knew about gravity before isaac newton he hasn't produced any evidence so we cannot examine it but dr n gobalakrishnan who is another scientist has published an article which is titled as we claim these are Indian discoveries and you can find it in net and in that fortunately he has given us the reference now this time he is claiming that it is from Bhaskarajarya and he has given Siddhanta Siromani book and this is how he himself has translated that gravity as found by Bhaskarajarya. This earth attracts whatever solid materials are in the space by her own force of attractions towards her. All those subjected to this attractional force fall to the earth. Due to equal force of attraction among the celestial bodies, where can each among them fell? By the popular understanding of gravity as gravity as mere attraction, you might think, oh, Bhaskarajarya found gravity before Isaac Newton not at all it's not what sir isaac newton found in his book principia mathematicia sir isaac newton when he described about gravity he gave a formula please note this point it is that which is which is significant it is not merely that he said there is an attraction he gave us a formula to calculate that attraction as you would see it in the screen you will uh, see you all know we all know that we have all studied it in the school now this is what he has found discovered that formula that formula was not found that mathematical formula was not found by anyone before him Na definitely not Bhaskarajarya neither Aryabhatta so that is what it is significant and why it is significant it has a universal application from an apple that falls from a tree to the solar systems galaxies you can calculate the the uh, uh, this by, by by this formula the movement of any object in the world if you know the mass if you know the distance you can actually calculate by using this formula you see there is a formula it can be applied universally it, and further it gives us deep insights into the world as you would see you can actually find what how would you weigh if you go to mars 
how would you weigh if you go to moon without actually going there so it gives us a deep insight so this is what the isaac newton found isaac newton gravity is not merely a statement that the earth attracts something to itself now that many theologians have stated it before isaac newton many people across the cultures have stated it what isaac newton distinguished himself by giving us a formula that has a universal application and a great insight now so the real question is why didn't Aryabhatta find the gravitational law? Why didn't he discover it? Why didn't Bhaskarajarya, despite knowing that there is an attraction, never applied his mind? And despite being a mathematician, never applied his mind to find out a formula. Why? That is the most important question. Because the modern science distinguishes itself from the ancient enquiries of the nature by its formulas mathematical formulas it gives us formulas and laws unlike any other ancient inquiry whether it is the babylonian egyptian chinese indian you can dis name anything none of them had formulas this is one of the distinguishing feature of the modern science so why didn't any of them apply their mind and give us a mathematical formula despite being great excellent mathematicians the answer is they were blinded by the Hindu teachings similarly they were blinded by the Islamic teachings they were blinded by the Chinese teachings but let us look how they were blinded Hinduism teaches that the prakriti or the material the matter is constitutes is constituting of three things sattva rajas and tamas these are the three substances that con constitute any material object in the world and this is called as guna now guna when we speak we will think that guna is an, just a quality or an attribute and not a substance Swami Surubananda who was a direct disciple of Swami Vivekananda the first president of the Advaiti Asrama in his commentary on Gita corrects this misconception he says on chapter 2 commentary on Gita chapter 2 45 Guna is wrongly translated as quality it is substance as well as quality in other words it is not merely quality it is a substance as well as a quality so you have to understand that it is both and he further goes on Swami Swarubhananda goes on in Gita 14.5 he says these kunas are the primarily constituents of prakriti and are the basis of all substances so hinduism taught that the world doesn't have any mathematical laws we'll come to that but it taught that all the world the universe is constituting of three different uh, constituents and everything is made up in different proportions as you would see Again, let me give you, it is not just one Swami who gave this definition. Similarly, Krishna, Swami Krishnananda Saraswati, who was the former General, uh, General Secretary of the Divine Life Society in Rishikesh, <coughs> who was the former General Secretary of the Divine Life Society in Rishikesh from 1958 to 2001. He also very clearly told us these are elements, they are not like qualities of whiteness of a cloth which is different from the cloth you see the quality can be different from the cloth but it is not it is not how we understand gunas gunas are the qualities of the prakriti in the same way as three strands of rope are the qualities of the rope in the other words that is how it is not merely quality, quality which you can distinguish but it is the substance that it is made of now if you start thinking like that you will only start observing in the nature to find out in what proportion is these qualities in each of the objects similarly let me give you Ramanuja's commentary you see, you see actually it has been a traditional understanding which now they fear to tell because they know how unscientific it is how absurd it is therefore they will they do not say it but Ramanuja's Gita commentary 14.5 again he gives us a similar understanding 
you see that was the problem that blinded the eyes of Aryabhatta that blinded the eyes of Bhaskaracharya now let me give you that how the Hindus in general understood it Manusmriti for example Manusmriti uh, chapter 12 verse 43 it says elephants Mlechas, lion Mlechas in the sense foreigners for example Americans Chinese uh, the Europeans all of them foreigners all of them are made of tamas one of the dark qualities now Manusmriti writer could have written at that time and uh, got away with it now we can actually test it and see whether it makes any sense absolutely no the material the substance of or the DNA of the guy in America is very very similar to the DNA of the guy in India there is absolutely nothing different it can be scientifically disproved that these are wrong similarly the caste system Kshatriyas are made of one quality they or they have a higher proportion of rajas brahmins have higher proportion of sattvas and for example the outcast the shudras out not the outcast the shudras shudras will outcasts will belong to the blachas only shudras are made of the, the higher proportion of tamas you see that was their understanding now it is not just about uh, the uh, human beings they actually uh, um, applied this to the gods also so if you are a shudra you should worship deities in it is said in gita you should worship deities which have tamagunas for example they were not allowed to enter into certain temples shudras were not allowed to enter into certain temples earlier because those deities in that temple has a different guna than the shudras guna now all of these things are gone the gita is unproven unscientific the manuspriti is proven unscientific because and they cannot they themselves cannot even practically apply it though i would say that they in some or how they try to manage it to fool the people even still now with this kind of theories which are absurd in nature it is not just Manusmriti, it is not just the Gita. You take Puranas, for example, Garuda Purana, Brahma Ganda, chapter 1. Again, it says not only the gods, not only the people, not only the animals, not only the stars, I will come to that, but even the Puranas are of different qualities. So, which Purana you should read it? You should read a Purana which corresponds to your quality. You should worship a God who corresponds to your quality. You see how they used to think now this is new to us in the sense <coughs> these days they are afraid to speak out the truth because the moment they speak out the truth we will say that this is unscientific now this is what had blinded the eyes of great men like Bhaskaracharya now this was universally applied Manusmriti says it is not just gods from gods to worms Manusmriti chapter 12 40 to 42 from gods to worms everything in the universe was made of these three constants so this is how they used to think why will Bhaskarajarya or Aryabhatta ever look for a law now this was not the case in the West West had the divine understanding from the Holy Bible. The Bible gave the light, it opened the light, it actually shed light to the eyes of the men in the West. Before that, Westerners also were blinded. We will shortly look into that. Dr. Edgar Silsel, who was a Jewish Marxist historian, he found it, he understood this. In his book, The Social Origins of Modern Science, he points out this though he makes uh, some other mistakes in the other chapters in this he is right in pointing out that the bible the holy bible always taught that the nature god has imposed a law upon this nature when god has imposed a law upon this nature as a christian what will you look for you will look for that law how to find that law that is how the modern science arose now you will see like uh, much before the modern science arose like in uh, you will see a picture in the uh, screen this was drawn in AD 1250 this is a, a supposedly an image of Lord Jesus Christ with a compass in his hand he is measuring 
the universe the earth he is uh, this is speaking about uh, this is a moralized bible this is speaking about the earth the day of creation now you see how he created he created with a mathematical law now this was the understanding this was the understanding of the christian so you might ask why did it took so much time for the westerners to start looking for the laws then if this is how the bible has taught the answer is westerners were also blinded before christianity came westerners were also blinded by the pagan beliefs aristotle the pagan philosopher he also had a very erroneous understanding just like our hindu friends and he also thought nature has its own properties mind and all rg collingwood in the book the idea of nature introduction greek uh, greek philosophy he says that this was the what he says is we can connect it very much similar to uh, what the hindus had or what the hindus still believe although they do not speak out because they are afraid because they will be exposed as unscientific but the greeks had it greeks had a very similar view that we must understand chinese had a very similar view so all of the cultures the pagan cultures had a very similar view so aristotle being a philosopher he propagated it and in the western academia until aristotle was challenged from the bible this was the prevailing idea though they were christians now uh, australian laureate the fellow and director of the institute of the advanced studies in humanity uh, peter harrison you will see he was formerly a oxford philo oxford historian he has done tremendous study into this subject and he says this it is important to bear in mind that aristotle had banned proscribed the transfer of method to one science to another in other words he would never ever apply max to science you see the, just like the indians would never apply aristotle would never apply because he never understood that there is a law in the nature because unless and until somebody tells you you would never imagine it but it is the holy bible it is the holy bible that gave you that understanding when the west repudiated the greek philosophy and went back to the bible they had the eyes open edward grand is a distinguished professor emeritus of department of history and philosophy in indiana university he was formerly the president of the history of the science society so he had also uh, done tremendous research in this area and one of his book the foundations of modern science in the, in the science in the middle ages middle ages we say that it is uh, dark ages but that has been challenged because the middle ages when they went back to the theology that laid the foundation and in this book he says a bishop in paris in ad 1277 he issued an condemnation against aristotle and he said aristotle is wrong in understanding the nature like this god could have created nature in any way that he wants there are no properties he could have imposed the laws upon itself so this is very well explained how that uh, condemnation went and uh, how uh, why we should observe the nature and study the nature all those these things are were uh, uh, implicitly there in that condemnation and then the christians actually started rejecting the aristotle there was now there is a division there was a division in the west between the those who followed the aristotle and those who wanted to follow the holy bible but this understanding as sir john henry says john henry from the university of edinburgh in his book uh, early science and medicine in the book early science and medicine uh, volume 9 uh, in his uh, contribution he says this is a single most important thing in the modern science if there is no law there is no science or there is no modern science the discovery and the understanding of the laws of nature as sils has noted is the basic task of science so laws of nature is the most important thing and that as understood was given by the holy bible and when the christian started thinking if god has given the laws in the nature let us find out that began the modern science it gave i am not speaking without any evidence 
let me give you from the writings of the modern scientist these very intentions let us start with uh, Nicholas Copernicus who was uh, a uh, father as we call it now a father or a pastor or a priest in the Catholic Church he said I began to be very annoyed by the movements of the world machine created for our sake by the best and the most systematic artisans of all were not, not understood with greater certainty you see what he is trying to say he is saying that though the Aristotle and the others have observed the movements of the stars, movements of the planets and all, none of them were very much troubled by the imprecision in their understanding. Because they thought how can it be have a precise mathematical law, how can ever it be, how can we even expect it. But Copernicus found it unsatisfactory because he believed that the God created it and God would do it in a precise manner and he has to find it. So it is a Christian faith that prompted Nicholas Copernicus to examine it. Now again, Galileo, take the example of Galileo who is often cited as, as though Christianity was against the science. Those people who say that have never read Galileo. If you read Galileo, you will see actually it was not Christianity versus science. The Pope of that time, under the pressure of the academicians at that time, went along with the Aristotle. And Galileo was fighting for the Bible. This you can see it in his own book. A dialogue, Galileo's book, Dialogue Concerning the, the Two World Chief System. Now this became the major issue for the Galileo's trial. Galileo was never imprisoned, Galileo was never killed, but Galileo had a trial and he was uh, house arrested for uh, a long period or uh, to the rest of his life. But this was in 1632, all, almost towards the end of his life. He wrote this book dialogue concerning the, the two world chief systems. The, which are the two world chief systems? One by the Aristotle and another by the Holy Bible. Where was Galileo standing? Galileo was standing on the side of the Holy Bible. And interestingly enough, the Pope was standing at the side of the Aristotle. That was the issue. You will see it in the screen. That uh, Simpleton, Simpleton is the one, uh, he uh, made it uh, like a Pope and he says that he was the disciple of the Aristotle. You see, it says, but yet I this say with Aristotle that things in natural is not always necessary to bring mathematical demonstration. This is the understanding in the Aristotle and they are still sticking to it. But the believers, the one who were led by the Holy Bible, the light of the Holy Bible, they wanted to find out the mathematical laws behind it. So again, Galileo's letter to the Grand Duchess of Christina, he again says the academic philosophers stood up against me no small number of professors. He says they are stirring up the church, they are saying that with the erroneous understanding of the Aristotle, they are trying to speak against the Holy Scripture and unfortunately at that time, church went under the pressure of the academia. Rather than standing for the firm faith of the Holy Bible, they went with the Aristotle at that time. So Galileo was standing and Galileo went on to say in the letter to the Grand Duchess Christina, the scripture can never go wrong. The Holy Bible can never go wrong. You see Copernicus, Galileo. Now not only Copernicus and Galileo, you see Jonas Kepler. Kepler in New Astronomy or Astronomy and Nova, he says, he found that there is a 8 minute difference between the actual, uh, the orbiting of the, uh, the planets and what was taught in that, uh, at that time. And he says, this 8 minutes cannot be, there cannot be a difference. This has to be precise. We have to have a formula. See, that was their understanding. If God created it, if God gave the law, that has to be precise. 8 minutes is not acceptable. Now, if you do not have that understanding, you will say, what 8 minutes? 8 minutes is okay, I will round it off. No, not this believers, not this Bible-based believers. Jonas Kepler again thanked God. As he found it, he says it is the divine benevolence. This is our Lord's grace, as we say it now, that we found it. And towards the end, he says, after finding this harmonies of the world in another book, Jonas Kepler says, I give you all the glory. Because what was stated in the Bible is now being discovered, Bible is being proven, he gives all the glory to the Lord. 
This is Jonas Kepler, scientist. All the modern scientists, they were firm, firm believers. They were priests. As Copernicus was a priest, Kepler was a great uh, believer. Robert Boyle. Robert Boyle was an apologist, Christian apologist, defender of Christianity. He wrote books on right, defending Christianity and arguing against the pagan faiths like Hinduism. He said these pagans will never understand that there is a law. It is Robert Boyle who says it. He says that they, they can never understand this because they will never look for that. But we believe in it. Robert Boyle, a free inquiry into the vulgarly recited notion of nature or Robert Boyle, all the about the excellencies and the grounds of mechanical uh, uh, mechanical hypothesis some consideration as you would see it in the screen he said it so again the bible commentator sir isaac newton isaac newton was a bible commentator like robert boyle was a christian apologist isaac newton was a uh, bible commentator nobody says that isaac newton not wrote more about bible than about science but today Isaac Newton is separated from the Christianity and he is presented as if he is a secular person. No, he was a Bible commentator. Robert Boyle was a Christian apologist. And what drove them to do the science was the biblical inspiration. Isaac Newton in the classical work, the groundbreaking work, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. or uh, He says in the preface, we are rejecting the substantial forms and the occultic qualities. People until then believe that the nature has occultic properties like the three gunas. We are rejecting it. We are rejecting that such understanding is erroneous. Now we are going to look for the laws. That is the gravitational law. You see how the connection? Again, Roger Cotes, who wrote the preface to the second edition of the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy or Isaac Newton's book. He was the editor and along with the approval of the Isaac Newton, he actually again uh, spoke about the erroneous method of the pagan method of the Aristotle. And he uh, gave the beautiful and the wisdom of the Holy Bible giving this laws. You see, it is the Holy Bible that taught people that there is law, you must look for it. And that gave birth to the modern science. Now, again I will show you one or, one, one or, one or two more examples. Pastor Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday was an elder of an assembly. Now again you would not know if you read the common secular uh, books. Somebody was a Christian apologist, another was a Bible commentator, Michael Faraday was a uh, Christian pastor, a church elder. He, what was his uh, status? How did he find about all these things? I.H. Hattichesan. Professor of Nuclear Science and Engineering in at MIT writes, one example of the influence of his theological perspective on his science is Faraday's preoccupation, preoccupation with the natural nature's law. Faraday was so found of, he wanted to find that nature's laws because he believed that God has found them, God has put the laws in the universe. God has been pleased to work in his material creation by laws. This is quoting Faraday, Faraday uh, the MIT professor is quoting him. He remarked, remarked that the creator governs his material works by definite laws resulting from the forces impressed on matter. You see how remarkably different this is from the Hindu understanding. Hindus think that there are three gunas. Christians think that it is the laws and not any other gunas. It is the laws and it is the laws that the Michael Faraday wanted to fight. Now, uh, it is this theological faith that made Michael Faraday the greatest experimental scientist that ever lived. We started with the Nobel Prize and I will say this, uh, Sir John Thomas, who was the director of the Royal Institution from 1986 to 1991. He says the genius of Michael Faraday in his uh, article that was published in the Engineering and Science summer 1992. Had there been Nobel Prizes in Michael Faraday's day, he would have won several. He would have won at least eight Nobel Prizes is what uh, uh, Sir John Thomas who was the director of the Royal Institution says. And he says it is Michael, it was Michael Faraday's faith. 
Christian faith that the obscure and the apparently unrelated curiosities of electricity and magnetism were indeed related because Michael Faraday believed that God has put laws into how the nature should work. You see, despite Aryabhatta and Bhaskara Jarya being great mathematicians, they were unfortunately blinded by the teachings of the Dharmic religion. Michael Faraday, Isaac, Isaac Newton, Copernicus, Kepler, all of their eyes were opened by the divine guidance of the Holy Bible. See how the Bible guides the people and the Dharmic religion puts them into darkness and darkness and darkness. Again, when London Royal Society was founded in his second chapter, AD 1663, they said this is for the glory of the God of the Creator. Again, they wanted to uh, further this new science, the science which says that there are laws. They wanted to further it. At that time, people mocked at them. There are novels, the virtues of the book Virtuoso by Thomas Schwartel, mocked at the Royal London Society to, because they were trying to find laws. Nobody could believe that there could be laws. Now it has been super successful. It has been remarkably successful that nobody believes that there is no law. Even the Hindus who believe that these are all gunas will still work like a Christian thinking that there are laws. That is the success of the Christian foundation that gave to the modern science. Now, Dharmic religions still promote this darkness. You see astrology for example, it still studies about the planets, rotation about the planets. But what is astrology all about? Astrology is thinking, oh, there are three gunas, you see, there are three gunas. Oh, your planet is in this position, so this guna is now uh, trying to destroy your life. See, such nonsenses people still believe. And unfortunately, Indian government is trying to reintroduce this nonsense back into the universities. This has already been proven, disproven, uh, proven wrong by the uh, science as Isaac Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, the great Bible commentator and the scientist said, these occultic properties must be rejected. But this is astrology still furthers on this nonsense understanding of the nature. Whereas astronomy, you see, against astronomy, nomos means law. It is a study of the planets to understand the laws, which is a biblical pursuit. And the other astrology to study, study the, the, uh, the gunas and how the gunas affects you. The nonsensical astrology is the contribution of the Hindu understanding of the nature. Whereas the astronomy, the study of the universal laws of nature is the contribution of the Christian Bible. Now let me tell you, why did, so why didn't the Muslims find it? You look at the nature of Allah, Allah doesn't govern, govern the nature by the laws. Allah acts every moment. He has to work 24 into 7. There is no Shabbat where Allah could rest. Rest in the sense taking pleasure on this nature. Allah has to work 24 into 7. So Quran chapter 8 verse 17, when Muhammad threw the stones, it is not Muhammad who threw the stones, it is Allah who threw the stone. You see, there is no nature. Allah is constantly working. The moment that you are working, it is not because you had a law to walk or it is the plants are moving just be not because of any laws because it is Allah who is making the law. Allah doesn't make any laws. Allah actually makes them move on its own. Again, Tafsir of al Jalalain, uh, commenting on uh, Quran chapter 8, 17, says exactly the same thing. Similarly, Quran chapter 6, verse uh, 95, the dates and the grain seeds, why are they growing? Because Allah is working, not because of any other nature's law, because Allah is working. 697, why are the stars and the suns? Because Allah is working, you see. And the cow's milk, again it is because Allah is giving it. You see, Allah is actually uh, working all the things. He has in, He never thought of actually putting the laws and uh, allowing the nature to function on its own. Unlike the Holy Bible. Holy Bible, God has put the laws on, law, laws on its own and it will obey the law. Uh, the laws, the nature will obey. Nature will follow according to the laws that the God has put and thereby glorifying his name. Al-Ghazali, the greatest of the Islamic philosopher, 
he uh, in his book the incoherence of philosoph uh, incoherence of philosophers al ghazali says this see you all understand that unless there is a fire there cannot be a smoke so we relate both the things one is the cause and another is the effect but al ghazali says no this is wrong it is just that the both of them are come together it is allah which is a cause of the fire and allah which is a cause of the smoke so you will again never look for a law because it is allah who has been working all the time this iranian understanding again had blinded the eyes of the muslims but the holy bible gave the right divine light to the people and those who walked in the divine light of the holy bible they excelled as psalms 119 was 104 to 105 says from your precepts i get understanding therefore i hate every false way false way we are hated your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path it is a proven case the bible is a wonderful counselor the jesus christ is the through the holy scriptures is the wonderful counselor giving us the light divine light in all aspects of our life if you follow it we will have the blessing if you follow the dharmic religion or the sharia religion we will be in darkness science is an example of that and today i have taken only one aspect of science but if you take any other aspects peter harrison for example has shown many other reasons why bible has contributed to the development of the modern science i have taken one aspect the laws of nature and from the laws of nature you understood how the dharmic religion and the sharia religion blinded the eyes of great intellectuals and how bible the divine light gave open the eyes of the men of god like copernicus galileo kepler isaac newton and uh, uh, faraday and robert boyle many other made great great men of god the servants of god who blessed this world because they were obedient to the biblical understanding that there are laws in this nature may this bible continue to guide us and let us hate every other false way because this is the only lamp to our feet and the light to our path may his name may the name of our lord jesus christ be glorified forever and ever amen